Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss the concept of inequality measurement. What is the relevance of the very same today? And how do we measure inequality here? So let's get started and see the very same. Move to the concept of inequality, we could see that this is something that is viewed from different perspectives. And when we consider the different perspective of considering inequality, we could see that all these pers perspectives are related. So let's see the different viewpoints from considering inequality. So what are the different ways of looking at inequality? The first way of looking at inequality is income inequality. So this shows the extent to which income is distributed within the population. Since we are looking at inequality aspect, we would be looking at to what extent income is evenly distributed, whether it is distributed in uneven manner or even manner. If it is in even manner, to what extent even? If it is in uneven manner, to what extent if it is uneven? Uh, and uh, to what extent it is uneven okay moving to the next type of inequality which is lifetime inequality so this will be looking at your inequality over lifetime moving to wealth inequality it will take the viewpoint by looking inequality from the perspective of distribution of wealth across different people Again, when it comes to inequality of opportunity, it takes into consideration the role of certain circumstantial factors like such as family, socioeconomic status, gender, etc. Now, we, we have seen so many, so many perspectives of inequality. We have seen income inequality, wealth inequality, inequality with respect to opportunities, lifetime inequality, isn't it? So, we, what we could understand from here is that all these perspectives are related and these offer different but complementary insights complementary insights that is what is important here into the cause as well as consequence of inequality there have been different causes to inequality there have been different consequences of inequality we will be seeing that in detail in our coming sessions uh, in some uh, uh, a new session will be there for that to discuss the cause and consequence of inequality. So here we will be basically looking at the measurement aspect of inequality. So when we could see that all these types of inequality are something which act as complementary to each other, this would be providing better guidance to the government when government goes for designing various policies which would be addressing inequality. This would act as some guidance to the government. Having said that, let's consider the measurement of inequality. Inequality concept is being measured by using a very, very important concept or a tool or this tool is called the Gini coefficient. It would be considered as a numerical measure of inequality which has been developed by a statistician Corrado Gini and this will be giving you a value between 0 and 1. The value of Gini coefficient ranges between 0 and 1, where 0 shows perfect equality and 1 shows perfect inequality. So if you are, if, uh, if your nation's uh, Gini coefficient is something that comes closer to 1, if it is closer to 1 means your nation is having a position which is moving towards inequality. So it is moving towards perfect inequality. Or else you could say that it is closer to perfect inequality. If it is having a value which is closer to 1, the sorry, closer to 0, if the value is closer to 0, then you could see that your nation is moving closer to perfect equality so having a perfect kind of inequality and having a perfect kind of equality this is not possible in a real life scenario because of so many complications imperfections kind of things so whatever we could see that most of the analysis that looks into the concept of inequality looks 
or it would be something that get captured by the gini coefficient the gini coefficient can be used in these in these arenas and also you can um, calculate the co gini coefficient for a large number of con countries for relatively longer periods of time so this is considered to be an advantage of gini coefficient and unless specified otherwise you could see that the gini income inequality that shows disposable income or consumption and for the very same reason this would already reflect any redistribution through tax and transfers so here we could see a graphical representation which you call in the name of lorentz curve so this is a graphical or pictorial representation of inequality and here you could see that if you have as i've told earlier if you have a gini which is equal to 0 your lorentz curve will be something similar to the line of equality so this is a line of equality here on the x axis you will be measuring the cumulative percent of population and on the y axis you will be measuring the cumulative percentage share of income so in this case uh, of zero gini you will be having your lorentz curve which is same as the line of equality this is the straight line starting from the origin is known as the line of equality okay so this is something that happens so this shows the case of perfect equality there there won't be any kind of inequality happening again if your gini is something that is between 0 and 1 that means your curve the lorentz curve is something that would be between this line of equality and this point so it so here the given lorentz curve is the blue line here so if you have a Lorentz curve like this, your value of Gini will be something that ranges between 0 and 1. So there, this shows there exists some inequality and also to an extent some equality is there. Again, if your Gini is exactly equal to 1, the third case shows that your value, your, your curve will be something, your Rollins curve will be something equal to the 2 axis okay so that is a case with perfect inequality and with lorentz curve you can calculate gini coefficient let's consider this value so you need a curve uh, which shows the line of equality so this is the line of equality and all you also you will be having a lorentz curve so when you have these two things you can give two you can get two important areas here so this would be well this would be area a and this would be area b when you have area b a and area b you can calculate gini coefficient from this so gini coefficient would be calculated by using the formula a by a plus b so this shows the gini coefficient so this shows how your gini and lorentz curve are related and that's all about today's session thank you for watching you can like share and subscribe to the channel for more videos also, you can be a part of my Telegram community. For that, I'll be providing the link of that in the description box. You can also download the Learn Economy app. For that, also, I'll be providing the link in the description box. Thank you for watching. Finally, like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos.